And now we delve into the dark recesses of the mind with Aether One. Moments, like stars, are passing me by, burning so bright and so fast as if they never truly existed at all. They're so beautiful, so fragile. I want to hold on to them. I want to hold on and never let them go. Why can't I hold on anymore? In Ether One, you take the role of a restorer, a kind of memory technician working for a company that uses their scientific advancements to help patients suffering from dementia. The Ishin Initiative discovered and developed new ways of mapping the human mind, expanding the knowledge of our species. Right away, though, you're not instilled with a whole heap of confidence in the organization. There's a bit of an aperture science vibe going on, hints at shady experiments gone awry and locked doors. Sometimes these procedures don't. Uh... How should I put it? Go to plan. Yeah, not to mention I'm always super sus whenever there's some disembodied voice talking you through everything. In this case, a lady named Phyllis. My name is Dr. Edmonds, but you can call me Phyllis if you like. Now, come on Phyllis, why can't we just chat about this face to face before I sit in that creepy chair and go inception hopping through some random's brain? Nevertheless, you jump in and the memories you explore are both touching and sad. Right, let's try to make sense of all of this. The mind in question is a 69-year-old woman named Jean, who lived in a British village called Pinwheel near a coal mine. There's some really lovely lighting and colour to the landscape as you explore these hazy fragments of Jean's life. Just listening to that melody would never get old. Yeah, I like the fact that there's this almost idyllic glow to everything, as if maybe this town wasn't quite so perfect, but perhaps she has a fond association with it, so she just remembers it that way. Yeah, it's all very dreamlike, isn't it? As you explore, you come across ribbons, which represent memory fragments that need to be restored. And you can choose to simply drift through this game, focusing on unravelling the story and treating it more as a walk -em up but to truly understand the scattered puzzle that is Jean's mind, there are much more complex problems to solve if you choose to take them on. Yeah, I really liked this. It basically gives you a bare bones experience that is perfectly substantial on its own in terms of narrative. But for the player that wants a more hands-on and challenging experience, they have the option to uncover a whole lot more. And honestly, once you pull it a thread, it's hard not to see where it's gonna lead. This is what's causing the symptoms of dementia in our patient. Yeah, it's nice and inviting with its cloudy mystery that surrounds a significant event that happened in the town. Yeah, you do your fair share of detective work, don't you? Reading notes, there's a lot of recurring imagery of a lighthouse that may lead to some tangible clue, or perhaps it's a metaphor conjured by her mind. Either way, you want to go deeper. Solving puzzles generally involves the use of objects you find around each area. You can only ever carry one item at a time though, so you need to teleport back and forth between your sort of mental home base chamber and Jean's memories, so you can store objects you think might be useful. Yes, and Phyllis is always letting you know that you could need any one of these objects later on to solve a task, which instills a kind of paranoia in you to just grab everything, because you never know, right? Let's get some pockets. Well, I need this cup. <gasps> a teapot. Maybe I'll need to make a cup of tea later. Beer. I could need beer. Better grab it. <laughs> yes, and that chamber ends up being a kind of kleptomaniac's trophy room. But at least it does allow you to keep everything pretty organised, which is a blessing when it comes to puzzle solving. This is also one of those games with lots of keys and codes for doors to unlock. Okay. So it's handy having a pen and paper to write them all down, and by the end of it, Hex, my book was a bit of a scribbled mess. Yeah, mine too, and rarely does a key or a code unlock a door that's close by. And in fact, I never found the doors to some of the codes I wrote down. But the more I struggle to access these secrets and memories, the more I realised this all serves as a really well thought out metaphor for an elderly woman's mind that can, in essence, no longer access the locked doors containing her precious memories. Dementia is really interesting subject matter for a video game, isn't it? And how intensely you search for meaning in this experience is really up to you. Yeah, I mean, there is enough of a sci-fi element here that you could be content to just play this as a memory-themed puzzle solver. And there is some serious challenge to all the memories and tasks should you decide to take them on. But if you allow yourself to consider the meaning behind the narrative and what the puzzles are aiming to represent, then it can be quite a moving experience as well. Yes, and ultimately this will differ for each player, which is why I think it's great that they've provided the option to just casually wander through or strive to unlock every secret. 
This is one of those games that's not going to be for everyone, but for me it was a really thoughtful balance of guided narrative and hands-on activity. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed this much more than I thought I would. Though I do wish they employed a few more inventive ways of driving the narrative than just through notes and letters that are always left on tables for some reason. Yeah, it's exactly the kind of game that could have played with delivering those snippets in a more interesting way. Like that moment where the camera flashes, revealing a memory from a birthday party. That was such a clever way to deliver that fragment of story, and I just wish they played with those ideas a bit more. Still, I found this very unique. Me too. It's an interesting way to deal with a sensitive subject of a deteriorating mind. You know, it's not an arty waffle through a forest. There's challenge and, and mystery there too, so I'm giving it 7.5 out of 10. I'm giving it 7 out of 10.